David Whitaker, also known as Diamond Dave, a local icon from the 60s. David, tell us your favorite story from the 60s. Well, I'm going to go back to the 50s because that's where I started. Uh, I'm like, a, I'm like the, the half generation uh, before. They talk about the, the, the hippie movement beginning here in 65, 64, but I go back to the beat generation. That, that segue between the beats and the hippies. Uh, in fact, my definition of hippie was beatnik plus LSD equals hippie. But North Beach was our hate street uh, back then, and I came here in 57. That was my summer of love. That dancing sideways down the ribbon of time, the path that had lit by the echo behind. I first came to San Francisco. And we read an article by Kenneth Rexroth in the Nation magazine saying something was happening here. It was, uh, this is February 23rd, 22nd, 1957. It talked about the poets coming in. It talked about a new uh, bohemian uh, lifestyle uh, coming up, probably the first since uh, World War II. Uh, in North Beach, Black Mountain Poets, Ginsburg and Kerouac, uh, uh, Ginsburg, uh, Kerouac, uh, uh, a new generation of, uh, uh, coming in, talking about poetry, politics, and uh, and in those days, uh, jazz. And so I get Black Messenger by day, Beatnik by day and night. It was 1957, and I was in seventh heaven and not linear dart on the, on the urban checkerboard. Seeds were planted then. The seeds were planted then that would be, that soon be growing. We didn't really know it was that four through the well, the four generation beat and it can't be punk rock, hip hop, four generations, uh, different styles, but there's something in mind. But there at the beats, uh, we were reading poetry, we were getting down, we were beginning to smoke uh, ganja, the first uh, modern generation uh, smoking pot and uh, talking about a, a gang of uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of beats uh, getting together and uh, and uh, 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 making history, history, and hipstery. It was really a handful of people. And when I was there, and then I uh, began tra traveling, went to Israel for a couple of years on the kibbutz. I was at the Beat Hotel. I uh, got to know Kerouac and Cassidy and what was happening then, and came back in uh, 60, in 1961 and came back to Minneapolis. That's where I got connected with uh, Bob Dylan and turned Bob Dylan on to radical politics, the bohemian lifestyle, the folkies. Uh, you got to read this, Bob, uh, Woody Guthrie's autobiography, Bound for Glory. It got him stoned for the first time. But uh, you could get a flow that something new was going to be happening. I got back in San, in, to San Francisco in 65. I went, I hitchhiked uh, with the mother of my kids, uh, Beverly, soon to my kids, my oldest son, uh, 39 years old. Uh, uh, got back here in, 60, uh, in uh, 60, uh, 65, went to North Beach, and a guy named Tambu who's now passed, gone to the spirit world, the sky, the spirit world, the other side of the camp. He's about seven feet tall. I don't know if you knew Tambu. He was a drummer. He was a drummer there on the street of Grand. He brought me to 1090 Page Street, which turned out finally to have very soon to be a legendary place. And that was like the first commune. That's where the music was being played. That's where people began to come in. I had known uh, Ken Kesey, and I met the, the, the soon-to-be Grateful Dead, uh, uh, in fact, at Kini's play, Kesey's place in La Honda, I think earlier that year, in 64, and then I'd gone to New York City. And I, I wanted to meet uh, Kesey because I could see something was happening there. I read one flew over the cuckoo's nest, and I could feel that a new lineage was coming along and beginning to hear about LSD. In those days, this is before Osley. This is before the synthesis of LSD. This is before all that. But in fact, what word had gone around. That in fact, everybody, uh, this small group of people were definitely interested in expanding our, ha, our ha, uh, expanding our minds. We had read uh, Ellis Huxley's Doors of Perception. We knew about mescaline and began to experiment with POT. And we had heard that uh, we had heard that uh, morning glory seeds, heavenly blue and pearly gate, was in fact a natural uh, form of LSD. And this, by this, I heard this even back in Minneapolis. And we began to we grind it up. We grind it up, and uh, the, when we got a little more fastidious, we put in caps, <laughs> take it, wash it down with some beer or something. But in fact, it was it was our first the first real uh, the real, first real trips of LSD was that, and the beginning of the mind expansion that led beatnik plus LSD equals uh, equals hippie. And the folkies, uh, the folkies are coming along, and we sent Bob Dylan uh, off to New York uh, to f find Woody Guthrie. He said, "I'm going to go see, I'm going to go see, uh, go to go see Woody." And the rest of that is history, history, and hipstery. But I got to, and there I was on Heat Street, and uh, 1965. 
1090 Page Street. There's a few other houses, communes, there's other kind of bad drugs uh, uh, going around and speed was coming in for like the second time. So we're walking that kind of walking down, walking on that tightrope wire for sure. Looking way down the line with eight years of sobriety, it's pretty amazing to think that I'd gone all through God, that I went through all of this. But first it was a trickle, and then a stream, then, then a river, then a mighty torrent of human beings, and it was Judas Priest. Where did they all come from? And I haven't, uh, I haven't yet said, I, I think about how it was that word came around that the thing to do was to come to San Francisco and get stoned and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and play music and dance out in the park and how it went from the beats to the hippies. Because the, the beatniks is beatniks. We, uh, we hardly ever saw the light of day. When the sun came up, we went down and suddenly there they were dancing in the park. And the, the, the transition somehow went, but it happened with sense. First a trickle, and you go out, you go out, and I had, uh, I had gotten the ability, and all these folks followed me out from uh, Greenwich Village, from Washington Square Park, from this row that we used to go, this row of benches we used to call humorously, uh, Junkies Row, because we were, we were, we were in Chip, anyway, called Junkins Row, we thought we'd never seen to, most people, so I was a little older, I was like uh, 24, uh, 24, 25 by then, so I was a little older, I was an elder even then, I guess. And uh, But everybody saw all these kids that were just getting into Ziggy, let me mention Keith, uh, Big Chris and Little Chris, kind of the nucleus that would later become the hippie movement, or a certain part of it all began to flow into San Francisco, kind of following me. And uh, But luckily I acquired uh, the ability to uh, to uh, find uh, find empty building. At, at that time there was a lot of empty empty flats in the, up here in the hate because white people were moving out because of redevelopment uh, it was called white flight and they were moving out to the suburbs and people had black people afro-american people were coming up from the fillmore uh rent was really cheap you could get a whole flat for 90 dollars or the first squats we didn't call them squats then they were called uh, communes I'd, uh, I'd, I'd learned to find a place that was probably that had been empty for a long time. We climbed through the window and opened the door up, and everybody would move in. And this was like 1967, and we'd go out, 66, or late 65, 66, and we started seeing other people look like us with long hair and beards. Where are they coming from? What's going on here? And we'd all go to lunch, and, and we call it Antoine's, St. Anthony's, and still then walk up to North Beach, because North Beach was still kind of the social center, Washington Square, and a place called the, a place called the, uh, uh, the Hot Dog Palace, and it was filled, filled with speed freaks and bad drugs and all of that, so we were battling with all of this, uh, but uh, going on and people beginning to come, first a trickle, then a ripped stream, then a mighty torrent, where are they all coming from? And there we'd be, as you see, and suddenly the streets were filled with folks, and it was amazing because we didn't really know it, we just, that, that song was going around. Uh, was in the top ten. I'm gonna put some put some flowers in your hair and come to San Francisco. So meanwhile, I'm I'm condensing this a great deal. There'd be a lot of stories I could tell. And then uh, we begin to then a small group. I'm talking about Peter Berg, Peter Cohen, the Diggers. I'm gonna do a poem called "30th Anniversary Summer of Love." This is '67, because we begin to realize that hey. All these folks are coming in. Who's going to feed them? Where are they going to eat? Where are we going to put up? Put up? And uh, we're also beginning uh, to be more and more politicized and struggling against that war. The that no war, that half forgotten war. But this is the poem: 30th anniversary, summer of love, 67, 77, 87, 97. Back then, and here's the poem I came up with. Oh God, give me some references. Almost solstice, another Monday. Here at the debate where the park begins, three decades down the line. Around me, small time drug dealers, hangers in and hangers out, Golden Gate kid campers, undercover cops, food not bombs, diggers of today, serving vegan soup and cats' bag, bag, cats' day old bagels, uh, saying get in a loop and have some soup, no time to frown, time to chow down, gathering around. Gnarly old hippies, the veterans of a half a gotten war, the wrecking crew, Fast Eddie's posse, dead-end refugees, dreadlocked street survivors, and gaggles of gutter punks just off the trains. The best minds of all those generations here at the bottom. Tide dyed wayfaring backpackers heading for, uh, heading for Oregon, the rainbow gathering, those for whom 1997 is their 1967. Laid on hand, my mind's eye dances down the ribbon of time. 
to that summer of love, that summer of bud. Here at the Digger Free Store, serving free food to draft dodgers, AWOLs fleeing the war, long-haired urban gorillas come, who oh, may? The free frame of reference, the, the communication company saying seeds the underground press and no joke, lots of good smoke in the Digger slogan. One percent free returns to the community. Screaming awake from the American dream. Four generations up here in this street. Hate street, beatnik, hippie, punk rock, hip hop, Rastafari. Four generations, different styles. But something summer in mind. Transcending all past categories. Welcoming all cool folk out here in the cutting edge. Well, the family dogs back at the beach, October 12th, soccer fields. Big bands, big names, big deal. But don't forget that, 1% free. People want to read, read some of the manifestos, see, see some, of them, some of the work of the time, what, what was being written there, what was going on on that street, hate street. Go to www.diggers.org and you'll see some of the manifestos, some of the words that are coming out and get some sense of what it is like when there is so many thousands of the people, but the past shakes hands and the future of the now. And here we be, as you see, as I said, freewheeling, freestyling, into free flowing into the millennium. Four generations, different styles, but something similar. So keep on going, here we be, as you see. Uh, whatever seeds were planted then, continue to flourish hipstery, herstery, and hipstery. Here we be. I'll finish with this short poem. This is sums it up. How does it work? Well, think what you need, give what you can, where you can, when you can, however you can. In other words, lend a hand. And what happens then? Strangers become friends, friends become family, family becomes community, and community on the, on the move. That's the movement I've been talking about for generations. Because, hey, bottom line was that we were brought together for a reason, and that reason was that we love one another. Brought together for a reason, and that reason is, is that we heal one another. Brought together for a reason, and that reason is we complete one another. Brought together for a reason, and that reason is we complement one another. Like what, yin and yang, left and right, up and down, old and young, man and woman, rock. And roll. There we be, as you see. So that's a, that's a little taste for the archives. There's a letter, plenty of footnotes, plenty of wisdom. The, 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 the devil and the angels are in the details. But there you be. I'll put that out there as my legacy for the time being. So thanks a lot, folks. Remember, the whole is greater than some of its parts. And we can do more together than any of us can do on our own. So let's get on the same page, get out of the box, and push the end. Thank you, my brother.